Hello and welcome to Spread Book Joy. I'm Jack, I'm a primary school teacher from London looking to spread the joy of books as far and wide as possible. Primarily this is aimed at teachers who don't have the time to go out and find inspirational books for use in the classroom, but actually for anyone interested in children's literature. I'm also going to share with you some of my art experiments, so if you're a teacher you might want to try them with the children in the classroom or you might just want to watch them because there's something nice to watch rather than just looking at me reviewing the book. So hopefully there'll be something for everyone here. So if you like books, if you like art, if you like children's books, then hopefully you'll find something that interests you here. Today's book is Instructions by Neil Gaiman. I'm going to do a piece of artwork based on a quotation from the book today using watercolour and calligraphy. I'm going to use fine tech pearl colours and some Cotman watercolours to illustrate. I'll talk to you a little bit about the book and a little bit about the authors and then I'm going to talk to you about uh, whilst I cut away to do the artwork I'm going to tell you, share with you a lesson that I designed and have delivered successfully to children in year six. So there are no warnings with this book, you can read it with any age group. This particular edition, I think it's the only edition, I've never seen anything else, um, published in the UK at least, it's by Bloomsbury and it costs £7.99 and it's a picture book, it's a small picture book, not a lot of words are writing in it, um, but it is quite long. So if you were reading it with younger children, I think you can read through quite quickly depending on the level of discussion that you're going to get out of it, depending on what you're planning to use it for. If you're just using it for story time, it shouldn't take longer than, I would say, about 10 minutes less to read. So Neil Gaiman uh, wrote the instructions initially as a poem for a friend who was having a baby and asked him to write something for them. So Neil Gaiman is one of the most prolific and successful fantasy authors, British fantasy authors of all time. He's currently um, doing extremely well. Lots of his work has been made into films or TV adaptations. Most recently his collaboration with Terry Pratchett, Good Omens, American Gods. Coraline, Stardust, he's done so many things but originally what really set him on the path to glory was his comic book series Sandman. So the series of comic books not suitable for children, definitely not, <laughs> I'll put that out there now in case you're thinking oh that might be nice to get for the classroom, don't get the Sandman for the classroom, not suitable. But he wrote this fantastic series which is apparently one of the best comic book series of all time. Charles Vess is a comic book illustrator of some renown. I'm ashamed to say I had to Google him to get a bit of a history. He's worked for DC and Marvel and Dark Horse and all the big hitters in the comic book world. And he had collaborated previously with Neil Gaiman on Sandman. And apparently he's done an illustrated version of Stardust, which I'm gonna now hunt down and make it a mission to find because I just absolutely love his illustrations. They're really vivid and bright and just, wonderful to look at. So he has an amazing website by the way, I would advise you to go and look at it, it's called uh, greenmanpress.com and it's got some fantastic works of art on there, so well worth a visit. So Neil Gaiman had written instructions for a friend, Charles Vess, who I'm assuming is also a friend, decided that he wanted to do some illustration and so this was the result of Charles Vess illustrating Neil Gaiman's poem and it's a masterclass in when you get the right illustrator and the right author together and what you can make out of it. So the poem originally was a set of advice or instructions for life but written in typically Neil Gaiman fashion is very whimsical and fairy tale like and Charles Vess has created a narrative and a character and he's managed to form it into this kind of journey that this character takes under the instructions of the sort of unknown omniscient narrator who talks directly to the character or directly to the to the audience because the book is written in second person which is unusual so just have a little quick flick through the book um you can see there are lots so even the, I mean they're not quite end papers but even these parts here you can see a lot of detail has gone into it. This is actually the journey that the character takes so when you've gone through the whole book you can go back and look at this and see that this is actually the almost the story map really. So as you can see straight away the language its commands touch the wooden gate in the wall you never saw before say please before you open the latch go through. 
and I won't read the whole thing, but I just want to show you the de level of detail in the illustrations that you can look for with children. So when the character enters the gate and into the garden, you'll see all of these fairy tale characters. There's Red Riding Hood, there's the Goose Girl, Three Little Pigs, there's a pumpkin carriage in the background, and I think, I don't know who that is, but is that the White Rabbit? It's possible. You know, I see something different every time I read it. Actually, sometimes if you really stop and study it, you'll see something you haven't seen before. But carrying on through, the character goes on this journey and there are warnings all the way through and there are instructions all the way through and little bits of advice. And some of it is really bizarre. I mean, actually, I think Charles Vess himself said he had real trouble illustrating the whole thing. Uh, I think he's done it amazingly well, but it took a lot of thought to think about how to illustrate some of these parts. So I'm not going to read it out loud to you. You know, I've got on the screen and you can see how it's written but I'm just going to show you this one bit in particular that I'm going to illustrate so this is the part I'm going to illustrate today not the whole thing but just this part know that diamonds and roses are as uncomfortable when they tumble from one's lips as toads and frogs colder too and sharper and they cut so I've chosen to illustrate that today because um, I don't know, I think it just makes quite a nice illustration. It's got some nice things that you can do some roses and diamonds and things like that. So you'll see it when I go through. So this is the book. It's not terribly long, but as you get towards the end, look at that. Just absolutely love it. Ride the white, ride the silver fish, you will not drown. Ride the grey wolf, hold on tightly to his fur. I mean, imagine Neil Gaiman sitting writing this at home just for a friend about to have a baby. When you said, oh, you're my friend, you're a writer. Can you... um?" write me something for my child and he comes up with this it's absolutely amazing um, in terms of resources and things i've seen online hamilton trust have some planning and so is a ts on instructions but all of the planning that i've ever found online tends to focus on using this book to teach commands and statements and questions with you in year two if you're a UK teacher, you'll know that in year two, which is about six, seven years old, the children have to be assessed, statutory assessment, and they have to know the difference between a question and a command and a statement and an exclamation, which is a really, really dry and hard topic to teach. So I can see how this would be used as a way of making a really dry, dull subject a lot more palatable. But I think that's missing a trick with using it. The real beauty of this book lies in the reader's interpretation. And I think when you look at it with more fluent readers, um, and not even just more fluent readers, but with children in any child of any age really, but I've used it with year six. And if you look at it as a set of instructions, what what's really going on here and look at it as a metaphor, then they begin to start talking to you about their interpretation of it. And I've had some really amazing in-depth discussion with really able readers in year six and they've produced some amazing writing and artwork inspired by this so i'm going to cut away now to show you the artwork that i'm doing and i'm going to talk you through my lesson i hope you like it so i'm about to detail some lessons that i've successfully delivered with year six using this amazing book I'm um, aiming this at teachers, so there may be some technical language, but anyone can do this with their child at home. Um, and I'm sure if you're a parent doing this at home, you'll have more time to spend on the wonderful artwork and their own writing than we would necessarily have in schools. If you have any issues with the technical language that I've used in the description, please just let me know in the comments below. And when I make future videos, I'll try not to include such technical language but also if you want some further explanation I can try and provide that. I do also want to recommend another resource which is Neil Gaiman reading the book on YouTube and that's him reading out loud with accompanying pictures so if you're a teacher and you need multiple copies of the book it's really good to have up on the big screen in the classroom and you check your whiteboard and you can hear him reading it as he intended it to be read and he's also got a wonderful soothing lovely calm reading voice so it's just a nice thing to watch anyway another is the website mousecircus.com which is neil gaiman's american publisher's web page about his work mouse circus being a reference to Coraline because there's a character who has a mouse circus in it there are 
quotations from Gaiman and stories from him and Charles Vest, which I got some information from about how this book came about. So it's worth looking at with the children exploring. It's also very pretty as well. And yeah, I'd recommend both of those. The recommendation on mousecircus.com is that the book is for the ages seven up. So if you're wondering about age groups and who to use it with, that's who. I've also seen some guided reading planning for year two using instructions, though I'm not sure that the words are very um, suitable for year two in terms of the, the tricky words that are in there. They're quite tricky. So I'd think about that carefully before using it for guided reading, really. So the lesson I designed for instructions was part of my master's in education. We did a creativity module and I used the book as a stimulus for reading and writing with year six. So initially I needed to find out what the children knew, what their prior learning was. Um, I wanted them to have a good understanding of grammar and sentence structure such as commands and statements simple and complex sentences and subordination and things like that and then also narrative features so cohesion imagery metaphor characterization so i went for a group of writers confident writers in year six and i needed all of that prior learning to be there this was about knowing those terms so they could have a discussion using the right terminology about the types of sentence structures they're looking at and what that means and why the writer has chosen them and being able to have discussion around author choice without getting hung up on technical vocabulary. So to start with an introduction or a starter, a warm up, I recapped on the features of writing that we'd learned about and what makes a story really enjoyable. It was just a real open discussion and recorded some of their ideas up on the board. And then I gave them a text only copy of Neil Gaiman's instructions. And when I say text only, I didn't even lay it out in a poem format. I just wrote it as just a block of text, just typed up and gave it to the children to read in pairs and I asked them what type of text is this does it remind you of anything we've read before um, and then when that leaving it quite open and then if they discussed it might be a story or fairy tales or what does it remind them of um, ask them if it's a complete story if it's a story and lots of why why not lots of getting them to expand on their answers um, really the focus of this is to see if they could using their knowledge of stories and books and writing and poetry, uh, what they would make of this piece of text and if they could recognise those elements in it. So going forward into more detail, um, asking them what elements of story it has, what point of view it's written from, if they understand second person and asking them where they know that from and what other narrative devices we use in the text, such as personification and similes, etc. And then actually asking them who the main character is. And this was something of some debate um, because, well, initially it isn't, but when they come to look at the actual text and there's a picture of a character, it's different. But throughout, if you're just reading the words, it's referring to you because it's second person and asking them who the main character is, well, they'll say it's, it's me because it, the narrator's talking to me. Uh, well, hopefully they'll say that. They may or may not, but leave it all quite open. Um, just take their ideas as, as they come. Then I would give them the book uh, with no pictures and no title yet. I don't give them the title either because I ask them what, it's part of the fun of it is asking them what they think the title of the book is. Um, and I have had a group who have told me they think it's something like instructions or commands or instructions for um, a fairy tale or things like that. It's really interesting to hear their answers. I just think it's a fascinating um, lesson actually. I tend to give them show them the book on the screen without the title page and we look through it together and read through it and ask them then if the pictures make a difference and then what they think the type of the text type is after that and then if it is a story what genre would the story be and then we explore features of different genre and what relates to this story and i ask them if they can spot any familiar characters or settings etc but the key question here then once they've read through the book with the uh, with the pictures and they've read through it before is what they think the title is and who the audience who they think the audience are for the book is it young children is it adult who is it and they'll always say it's for younger children it's a storybook for younger children and the reason for that is that you want them to see that yes it's a picture book so initially when they first think of picture books they think of younger children they never seem to 
they don't quite understand that picture books can be enjoyed by anyone of any age and that also even the simplest of stories, fairy stories etc have could have a deeper meaning and resonate with anyone older and everyone of different ages and different experiences will get something different out of a book no matter what the intended audience might be that any book is worthy of you looking at and interpreting no matter what your age you know adult child and um, you might want to ask them if they know the author they may have done some reading they may have read some Neil Gaiman before um, and then you reveal the title and the author and ask them is this surprising and why and then discuss the title and that'll probably give you that's probably an entire lesson actually of work so the next part you'd probably have to do over another lesson it's probably a small unit actually a small writing unit of work i've done it over say three sessions with children So then in pairs or groups I would give them a frame which is cut into four and has characters, uh, setting, themes and narrative devices uh, on them and I ask them to record their ideas and read through the story and pick out what they can see in the text that's familiar to them in those different areas and if we were to create our own piece then what would we steal and I'd include in that sentence stems um, I made my own collection of sentence stems if anyone's interested in this lesson plan and any resources I made for it I'm happy to post them but I'd need to know if it's something you're interested in so please just leave that in the comments below and I'll think about how we would do that we look back at our own original text type and look at the main character and we talk about we focus on the main character and have a think about what kind of hero is he and you know he's what kind of character sorry not kind of character hero is he what kind of character is he and inevitably we think about the fact that he's the hero but then we talk about is he a hero why why not why does he take the journey who is the narrator why are they instructing him and you know what are the instructions like and are they all the same actually some of them if you examine it more closely some are quite bossy some are sort of advice some are warnings some of the instructions so it's it's all worded slightly differently and then we get onto the real meat of it which is is there a serious message to this book and I will say to them, oh, you know, when I was looking back at it, I suddenly started to wonder maybe there's a deeper meaning behind these messages. And maybe the whole book has a deeper meaning and it's a metaphor, the entire book is a metaphor. And so we started to examine one piece and I'll, I'll pick out a piece and we'll look at it together and I'll say, could this have a deeper meaning? And you can pick out any of the, any of the parts of the poem that you like at that point. I've not told them before that it started life as a poem because actually now that it's in a book with a narrative I always think of it more of a story rather than a poem but when you get through all your work you can talk to them about the fact the history of it and how it started um, but it's nice to not know these things at the start so you can just come the children can come to it um, sort of fresh and with bringing their own ideas and their own interpretation so then you would let them just go through the book talk through each section and decide with partners in groups what are the deeper meanings of it and that is the most wonderful discussion and you'll really enjoy that and so will the children they they think of it as a challenge like trying to find out the secret meaning and you know then the discuss the plenary will be really do you now think differently about it than when you originally looked at the text and i don't think i've ever had an issue like these are usually because they're usually quite um able confident readers and you give them a picture book and they're like why are we looking at this picture book by the end of the second session you're quite excited by this idea of metaphors and allegories and what they might mean and then they want to look for these things in their own reading and it's really a special moment when that happens so then i ask them to go back to the plan for their writing and think about their hero and their journey and what journeys they're planning for their you know what instructions they're going to write for their hero and what kind of metaphor are they going to use a journey are they going to use something else what what are they going to do for theirs and then to have a think about their writing to have some sort of theme and for it to be could it be a metaphor for one of their journeys and you know they're in year six and usually I've done this in the summer term like their journey from primary school to secondary school um, and things like that so and what imagery would lend itself to this 
and we come up with brainstorm lots and lots of ideas and then I will always get them to, once they've written out their journeys and their instructions, their own, they can name it whatever they like. Um, I always get them to do some artwork around it. And in the past, what we've done, I've done some things like watercolor galaxies because children like this idea of this universal life journey and the ideas of some children in the class had come from a fairly religious background and so think about ideas of you know the universe and heaven and things like that and then you get other children who um, want to do this sort of you know have their own very very definite ideas of how they would illustrate it and they would do an illustration for each section but that's a lot of work so I tend to try and get them to wrap it up into one picture because being a group of a group you can't spend all that time on it and as you know time in schools is very short and precious so quite often we have to move on to other things and it's sad because I really do think it'd be really nice to have an, their own book instructions book and illustrate it and maybe that's but that's a lot of artwork to do and as you know there's a whole broad curriculum we have to cover cover and sadly we can't just do art every day much as we'd like to um, but it's a wonderful experience I think it's a wonderful thing to do the end of year six and I've not really done it whole class because I've not had my own class for the last few years and the role that I've been doing in school has been quite different but I've taken groups and done extended writing and, and things like that with them so I'd love to see how this works with the whole class if you have tried it and if you have any success I'd love to hear about it I'm sure other people would as well this is all about sharing really this channel the whole idea of spreading book joy it's not just me hopefully anyone watching this will be able to take part in the discussion and share what they've learned or what they've done if you've got any other ideas for using this wonderful book I'd love to hear them thanks for bearing with me with my drawing and well painting and writing experiments. I've been learning calligraphy for about two years now and you're supposed to practice it daily. I never get a chance to practice it daily. I've been also really keen to learn watercolour and so I'm, I'm also quite an early learner of watercolour. So um, the point of me doing all of this is actually more for me than you because it's an opportunity for me to have a reason to do some painting and some accountability, which means if I'm gonna be posting videos regularly, I'll just be thinking about, wow, what am I going to do for the next video and that will give me the impetus to actually sit down and relax as I was doing here listen to a podcast listen to a book and just even do some art and it means also that I can film videos without setting up anything or putting any you know face of makeup on so I'm presentable for a camera I can just film all week when I'm doing anything interesting that I think you might like to watch and yeah and then I can just add my audio over the top it just makes my whole life of producing videos a lot easier really and um, hopefully it gives you something inspirational to watch and maybe try yourself as well I'd highly recommend doing art if you're a teacher it's so therapeutic and so relaxing and also wonderful because you get to learn all these new skills that you can teach and do with the children if you're a primary school teacher and also I do recognize that the resources I'm using in this video the fine tech pearl colors the Cotman watercolors well the Windsor and Newton which are an expensive brand but the, that's their cheaper version the Cotman ones but they're still quite expensive you wouldn't use these in class I mean you just use whatever you've got to hand really you could just do some watercolor with the watercolors you've got in school and you could throw some glitter I mean although at the moment I've got a real thing about glitter because of the plastics issue however you could you know whatever it is to make it nice and shiny and sparkly you can just actually use highlighting with white to make it look sparkly and things like that so I hope you've enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it, please click subscribe. If you've got any requests or any ideas for anything going forward you'd like to see, videos won't always be art. I will do some talking to the camera at some point so you'll get to see there is a person behind this. And um, yeah, hopefully as the channel evolves, there'll be lots of different things and takeaways that you can use in your teaching. And really the whole point is to spread book joy. So don't forget wherever you are, please spread book joy wherever you go. Thank you. Bye.